In the fall of 2008, the Pride agenda for the first time emerged as a major force in electoral politics, setting in motion a year like none other. The Pride agenda in the LGBT community played an unprecedented role in the 2008 elections. We had staff working in campaigns in western New York, in Long Island, in Brooklyn. The community got involved on a volunteer basis in campaigns around the state. Together with our allies, the LGBT community uh, spent and raised north of a million dollars, making sure that those who stood up for our community won their elections with larger margins than they had two years ago. And we did that. But that same election cycle ignited shock across the country as fear tactics led to the passage of Proposition 8 in California. I am a Massachusetts parent, helplessly watching public schools teach my son that gay marriage is okay. Knowing those same tactics could come to New York, the Pride agenda immediately went on the offensive. We conceptualized the idea of a Mythbusters, a web-based tool that allowed people to go to one place, see all the various arguments that we knew had been used in other places against marriage equality and refute them. I want to make it very clear that here in New York State, there is absolutely no requirement to teach about marriage in schools. We would address each one of their lies that they have used in other states, and we would say, here's what they're going to tell you. I'm part of a New Jersey church group punished by the government because we can't support same-sex marriage. And here's the truth. We have never had pressure, never any outside pressure from any group or from anyone um, to perform marriages, to, to give sanction, never. And we inoculated ourselves early on against the opposition, what we knew would be the opposition's lies, and it worked. Pride Agenda also took on myths surrounding transgender issues in the workplace. Keep rocking and keep knocking. In March, we released a report on transgender issues in the workplace. This was similar to the Marriage Mythbusters project in that we knew falsehoods were going to be out there in the debates. One of their favorites is that passing agenda is going to create chaos in the workplace. I thought bad management created chaos in the workplace. Now I know it's transgender people. Who would have known? That same month, after years working with the Pride Agenda, New York's senior senator, one of the most powerful senators in the country, had a change of heart on marriage. One of the highlights of our past year was when Senator Schumer stated his support uh, for marriage equality when previously he had been in favor of civil unions. The gay rights group Empire State Pride Agenda says the influential Democrat expressed the change at a meeting Sunday with the organization. We give people information they need to know more about the issue, and I think we've done it probably as good or better than any other state organization in the country. While information has influence, it's the word of the people that often has the greatest impact in Albany. So Pride Agenda conducted targeted polling on marriage equality in key state Senate districts. We found in every case that New Yorkers don't vote on who their state senator is based upon this issue. They just don't. They have a lot of other things that they're more concerned about. And when we were able to show that information to state senators, it got the politics out of the way on the marriage issue. And we were able then to talk about it on a much more kind of personal level. At the end of April, Thousands of New Yorkers, armed with their own personal stories, came to Albany from all parts of the state for Equality and Justice Day. With Equality and Justice Day this year, we just blew through our goals. We had to close down registration days before the event was to take place. This may very well be the largest political gathering of LGBT people and our allies in New York State's history. This day is the most inspirational LGBT event that I've ever been to. We have so many people here today of all different ages, all different walks of life. It's amazing and inspiring to see it. Union leaders personally lobbying legislators, arguing 
that this is an issue that they're advocating in support of. Today, the New York State AFL-CIO, with their 2.1 million members, are now supporting uh, our right to marry. By May, for the first time ever, the State Assembly passed Gender, the Dignity for All Students Act, and marriage equality in the same session. Hearts and minds were changing. I got a feeling that tonight's gonna be a good night. When the assembly debated the marriage bill, I was sitting in the gallery and listening to the assembly members who had changed their mind since 2007 and decided to vote in favor of marriage was a really powerful moment. It's important to be able to change your vote. When you get more information, you will understand something better. Assemblywoman Galef is one of five members that changed their votes from no to yes this year. Their revolution was similar to the same evolution that Senator Schumer had, the same evolution that our own families have had, and many New Yorkers have had in the same time period. Pressure was now building for the Senate to vote on marriage and to help deliver the message in a big way. The Pride agenda, for the first time ever, brought the campaign to television. Well, today, the Empire State Pride agenda launched its first ever television ad campaign. Our daughter, Jody, three years ago, met the person she loved, and she was able to marry him. Our daughter, Amy, met the person she loved 12 years ago, and she can't marry the person she loves. It wasn't scripted. I mean, we literally asked them to come in and just talk about how their families were hurting because of this inequality. My brother is my hero, and he should have all the same rights and privileges that I have, and the law should be changed. By going on TV, our community made a big statement. We basically said that we have the resources, and our community is willing to put up the resources when necessary. By the end of May, Iowa, Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine had all passed marriage equality. New Yorkers were more than ready to finally have equal rights here at home. If we do what we need to do, New York can once again take its rightful place as a leader of civil rights in this country. Our strategy was tight. I mean, we were rolling. We were absolutely rolling. Poll shows that a majority of New Yorkers want a gay marriage bill passed by the state legislature. We will have marriage equality. Their momentum is growing. The community was engaged. There were more people than the Pride agenda pushing to win. I feel like we're at an amazing point in history. And then who could have imagined it? A coup in the state Senate. a coup, call it a devious plan to change leadership, but at the end of the day, Democrats were out of power in the New York State Senate and Republicans were in. So far, special sessions have produced nothing more than blaming and bickering between Republicans and Democrats in the State Senate. Our issues are still on the table with the State Senate. Our community needs to stay engaged, keep putting pressure on them, and to take action when we let them know it's time to do something. I think our community is fired up and is ready to engage, work harder, and push through to win this. If we all do this, we're going to have some serious victories before the end of the year. I know one thing for sure. I know that if we give up, we're never going to win. I know that if we stay the course, we're definitely going to win, and the harder we fight, the faster it'll come. The choice is yours.